Welcome and thank you for joining this month's session of the Disabilities and Conditions of Aging Network. And when I say thank you, I really do mean thank you. The original goal behind developing this network was to try to help the disability community itself be more connected so that all of us who are working within that field, within that realm, can support each other and, and also help promote what our different organizations um, and networks and parts of the community are doing so that we can all support one another. Um, I am currently being invaded by a cat. And uh, so, um, as I was saying right before I got the recording going, it, to that end, some of you or all of you really should have received an email from me about the LaTanya Reeves Freedom Act, um, which is national legislation that essentially, when this is really simplifying it, enshrines our right as people with disabilities to live in the communities of our choice with long-term services and supports through home and community-based services. And, um, and you know, it, it's interesting because that, that legislation used to be the Disability Integration Act. It's been bouncing around on the Hill for years and um, was rebranded in 2023 as the LaTanya Reeves Freedom Act. And um, as I was saying, it does currently have enough co-sponsors in the House for it to pass. And on the Senate level, it has, I believe, um, exactly an even 50 co-sponsors. And, um, and so would need the Vice President's vote to pass. But when she was a senator, uh, she co-sponsored the Disability Integration Act. So we anticipate that support. Um, I, the most recent update I saw, which is what we were hoping for, was that the bill's author has pushed for a public discharge, which would mean that it moves out of committee and directly to a House floor vote, where again, it has the support to pass. But I'm not sure if the actual public discharge piece needs additional support. So I was looking to see if we need to call our, um, currently in the in Indiana, only two of our uh, representatives have signed on. So, and those of course are the two Democrats. So if we need to call our uh, Republican representatives in the US House to get their support for the public discharge, that's what I was looking for. Um, we may need that, and and I, but I also don't want to ask people to make phone calls if if it's already got all the support it needs. But certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, if you're interested in that, look back at the email that I sent, probably about a month ago. It has all of their phone numbers on there. You can also look at the current blog post at walkingspirit.org, um, as that has all of their names and office phone numbers, and also office email. Um, contacts if you wanted to reach out to them. So um, other updates from Walking Spirits and there really isn't, I was hoping to promote a, um, a NAMI fundraiser that I am part of a speaker's showcase for that was coming up on October 9th, but I just received word yesterday that that's been postponed to the spring, apparently due to some issues with sponsorship. But uh, but that is a fundraiser for NAMI. Be on the lookout for that to come up. Um, I believe we're going to do that more regularly once we get the first one launched. I th think it's going to be part of a series. So that's it from Walking Spirits end right now. We don't have anybody necessarily in the spotlight, so I'm just going to pitch it to the next person. And we're going to do it a little bit differently today, make it a little bit more interactive. I'm going to ask you that when you're done sharing about what's going on in your, your organization, um, that then you pick the next person and pass it on. So I will start it off by passing us on to Adam Brainerd. Morning, everyone. 
Um, I'm distracted by your background, by the way, Jeremy, all the Star Wars stuff. I keep looking at the different things. Um, I haven't joined the meeting in a while, so I was kind of just wanting to come back and see what the group is discussing and some of the things that are going on. I'm from Care Source. I'm a community park community partner specialist. I focus on housing. Um, right now we have uh, a couple of Medicaid contracts for Hoosier HealthWise and Healthy Indiana Plan. Um, so yeah, I don't really have much more to share other than that, but I'm glad to be here. And I guess I will go with Allison. That's who I see on the screen. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, pardon my hair. I'm working from home today. Um, and I'm also, I was in the midst of making coffee for myself. Um, I am uh, Allison Weimer. I work for the Governor's Council for People with Disabilities. Um, I am, I guess, the program manager there, or whatever you want to call me. Um, so I... So the Governor's Council has been up to, um, sorry, that's my dog. Um, both my dogs have decided to start scratching right now. Um, Can't hear them at all. Oh, good. <laughs> I can hear mine. Um, what's what's that? I can hear my dog. But yeah, oh, I okay. Hear I'm glad you can't hear mine because it's, it's really distracting to me. Um, so uh, we, this summer was incredibly busy. We, as I said before, we had the five by five um, uh, intern, uh, public health workforce internship that we launched. Um, it was really successful. Um, we actually took uh, them to um, NACDD. Um, uh, their conference in DC. And um, that was really great. Um, for many reasons, um, we participated in uh, the showcase there, they had like a, a showcase of all of the states. And um, so we got to kind of showcase the interns and talk about the program. And there was a, a very large uh, interest in that. So that was really cool. Um, and from a personal standpoint, going to that conference was really great because I got to meet a lot of self-advocates and, um, you know, other councils, people from, uh, all over the country and territories who were doing work for, uh, you know, people with developmental disabilities and learning about what everybody else is doing. So that was really cool. Um, and uh we i'm trying to think of like everything we did so uh sai just had their um picnic the self-advocates of indiana just had their picnic this past friday um and that was pretty neat we were there um tons of organizations and self-advocacy uh uh chapters came from all over indiana that was awesome. Um, also, I'm hoping they had a, a voting registration there. So I'm hoping that they got a lot of people registered. Um, and um, now we are gearing up for federal reporting. So that's a really, really busy season for us, but it's not really that exciting. <laughs> it's just us federal reporting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're also doing the family advocacy project, uh, which I am not involved in, but, um, it's, uh, there's a lot, they've been doing a lot of, uh, seminars and meetings and, um, you know, multi-day long, uh, meetings to determine how they're going to move forward with that project. So that's basically what we're up to. And I cannot see anybody in the meeting. So let me see. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass it on to James. Hey, thanks. Um, so my name is Jim Ginner. I'm with Ham You're good. Uh, my name is Jim Ginner. I'm with Hamilton County Health Department. Um, we're just gearing up to, uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff in the schools. And I just became um, a mental health first aid in um, youth mental health first aid instructor. 
So we're going to be setting up some of those courses as well too. teach a lot of QPR suicide prevention um, courses this month for suicide awareness month and just hanging out. So if you, have, if you all are in Hamilton County and you ever need um, support with your clients, um, we're here to help. We do uh, free HIV STD testing as well too, which a lot of our um, individuals in the community uh, may be at high risk for HIV and STDs and we'll be more than happy to take care of them, get them tested and treated for free. So that's something that we're pushing as well too. But if there's anything that I can help you with, let me know. And Sonia. Thank you. I am with Accessibility and that is a center for independent living for those that um, identify as disabled. Um, we do have quite a bit going on. I'm gonna try and just go down the list here. So um, in the end of this week, we have um, the 2024 Independent Indiana Conference um, that is up in Noblesville at the Embassy Suite. Um, it's basically for, you know, other SIL suites or SILs like us um, getting together, but we do have some um, people that are going to be talking from other agencies. Just if you're interested, let me know. Um, we have a benefit breakfast coming up. November 7th at the Round Room and Fishers. Um, I'm hosting a table there. So if anyone's interested in learning more about accessibility, that is a good place to go. Um, and I wanted to highlight, we do have groups for um, our consumers and family. So families of visually impaired meet the third Wednesday at 6 p.m. We have a neurodiverse group that meets the first and third Thursdays. And please, you don't have to remember these. I'm just letting you know what we have. Um, we have a disc queer uh, group that meets the first Tuesday at 6.30. We have an amputee group that meets the fourth Tuesday at 6 p.m. That's with Jeremy. That's in person and online. We have a Spanish Zumba class. We have a spinal cord injury that actually meets at Rehab Institute of Indiana. And I'm starting a financial wellness class that um, is the second and fourth Tuesday that is a Zoom and it's 11.30 um, to 1 p.m. And that's pretty much what's going on with accessibility. Um, Sonia, before you pass it on, I, I will just jump in real quick. If anybody is going to the Independence Indiana Conference this Thursday, which is why we needed to move this meeting, um, <laughs> I, I, I am actually presenting the workshop, one of the two workshops going on um, at the beginning of the conference, and that's going to be on accessible D, DEI and belonging. And how that works with the ADA and how to utilize that to enhance our communities. So anybody wants to, it's really going to be a very heavy deep dive into titles one, two, and three of the ADA. Uh, but we'll talk about some other things too. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, uh, I'm going to pass to Kendall. Perfect timing. I just got on my computer. <laughs> I just switched from the phone. Uh, hi, I'm Kendall Tilton. I'm from Noble. I'm at the Moving Forward Career Center here. Um, the, I guess the one thing I wanted to talk about this week was our family support network. Um, we do have a, and it's part of the Two Gen project through uh, Easter. Well, we're in partnership with Easter Seals on some of our things, but it's it's a United Way project. Um, Families can get uh, supports through us. It would be a uh, essentially a case manager that would come out and provide supports, provide resources, and it's for any family 
with children um, in the home who is on the lower end of the incomes, there is an income guideline. Uh, the purpose is to promote, promote multi-generational wealth. Um, so if anybody has any families they would that would meet that category, they feel would need some referrals to resources, um, let us know. And I'm gonna pass it to Jessica. Thanks, Kendall. Uh, my name is Jessica Garber. I am the marketing director here at Connections Case Management. So we do Medicaid waiver case management. Uh, we serve uh, the family support waiver, the community integration habilitation waiver, the health and wellness waiver, and the traumatic brain injury waiver. And uh, we're about to add uh, potentially another waiver. Um, we are going to be working on the CMHW, which is the community mental health waiver. So we are working to actively um, start wrap services uh, in the near future. So that's something else that we are working on. Um, and so I have not been on this call for quite some time. So thanks, Jeremy. And uh, it's nice to see faces again. Um, I have, it's just been kind of a crazy whirlwind. So I'm glad to join. Um, the main reason I wanted to get on is we like to network and talk with other providers and just um, help out wherever we can um, promote promote the waiver and ensure that people are aware of the waiver and help them sign up if they're not currently signed up for the waiver services they're eligible. Um, and we also are currently working with Self Advocates of Indiana, which um, I believe Allison had just mentioned that they had the SAI picnic at. We were also there on Friday. Uh, I heard it was a great turnout, lots of people. I got to see lots of pictures. I was in Bloomington doing another event. Um, but we are partnered with Self Advocates of Indiana through an IPP grant that we received and working with them to take that over as of next year. Um, but we have four um, remaining resource fairs um, left here this year in um, the around the state. Uh, the most, the newest one that's coming up is the one here in Central Indy, which is September the 28th. I put the information in the chat. Um, I put a flyer in there as well as the information so that you're able to share that with everybody. It's for people with all types of disabilities. Um, that's who it's geared towards. Um, so they have over 70 vendors. Uh, they ran out of space and had to ask me to go out and find more tables because the school, Ivy Tech, is at Ivy Tech. It really ran out of tables for this event on Saturday. So um, it should be a great show of lots of different uh, vendors that are available. Um, there's such a truck and a food truck and a bunch of other things as well. So entertainment for everyone to be involved. And so if you're interested in coming out and supporting uh, Self-Advocates of Indiana, that information is there. And then um, the other, there's three more. They're in Lafayette, Richmond, and East Chicago. So if you are interested in becoming a vendor, um, please let us know. I think it's only fitting that I then pass the baton to Sean, who is part of Self Advocates and has helped out with several of the resource fairs. Okay, well, thanks. Um, so I was going to mention what you was just mentioning about the resource fairs, but okay, that's good. I don't have to do that one. And then um, I'll go back to the picnic because um, we had um, more people show up than we have ever had and they did not register <laughs> so we had um I, i'm gonna i'm gonna probably just say probably like 500 to 600 people because they're more there than like i said ever and uh so this year we had two caricature artists which was busy the whole time they didn't get no breaks um but it was just an all around good day. And I loved it because it was hot. So it was great for me. Um, and then I just got done with chairing the med works committee. We are making, trying to make sure that people all over Indiana know about med works because when I do CCIRs, which is career counseling information and referral, at sheltered workshops, people are like, what is that? I've never heard of that. And so does some of the staff. So um, 
coming from the 1102 task force, we did this in like, uh, I think it was like a two months uh, work group. So we're trying to fix that issue and the asset limits um, for people to have in their accounts. And uh, the one thing that was weird that was why we were doing that, this uh, committee was that they also wanted us to look at the um, age for the ABLE accounts. So um, we were talking about uh, maybe raising it or lowering it. What I can't remember what it was. But um, hopefully that CMS will let us um, raise the amount because $2,000 is not very much for people um, to be able to save. And so we made us a recommendation to between uh, ten and $13,000 for somebody to be able to save money. Um, let's see. Um, going back to SAI, Self Advocates of Indiana is going to be starting next year um, doing like we are SAI going to each of their chapters. I'm not sure when they're going to do this because they're always busy doing presentations and stuff. So in the meantime, in the uh, er, sometimes when they're not doing something, they're going to go and do uh, those visits to make sure that the self-advocate groups have what they need and um, just to get to know them better and so we can work better together. Um, we're also doing a project where we're going to hopefully get people with disabilities to become DSPs, um, which everybody knows that there's DSP shortage. And so why not have somebody with a disability that knows people with disabilities? So um, we're going to modify it so that um, if they work with someone else, that they don't have to pass meds and go through all that stuff. So there's that. And then we're also right now um, working with Humana with a wellness project that we're doing to make uh, people, well, not to make, to hopefully have people um, be more healthier um, so they don't rely on um, using their insurance so much and so they're healthier. Um, there is just so much stuff going on. Um, I think I'll stop there because there's a, we would be here for a while if I told everything that we do are doing between self advocates of Indiana and the ARC. Um, so I will pass it to, um, let's see, did Jamie Olson go? Not yet, but happy to go. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Sorry, I similar to Jessica this summer, run uh, different groups every uh, Thursday during your guys' calls. So I haven't been able to jump on. So I was actually happy that you made it on a Wednesday. I'm like, oh, I can be on this one. Um, so I'm Jamie Olson, and I have the pleasure of publishing um, formerly Special Needs Living, now titled uh, Uniquely You. And uh, we are doing a really cool event on uh, November 2nd. Um, it's our purpose-driven fundraise. So I put that uh, information in the chat box if you have any individuals that would love to come out and participate, companies, families, um, organizations, there's opportunities to contribute as a team, as a company and compete against other teams. And um, also they're, they're, we're partnering with Miles Ahead. Um, they have electric uh, cars. So individuals 16 plus can come out and um, experience um, a purpose-driven fundraise and talk more about the purpose-driven moments in their lives that help them become who they are today. Um, so we're looking forward to that. We're going to have uh, vendors there, resource fair, and uh, food trucks and organic farmers for food tasting. So it'll be a really fun day to come out, cheer, celebrate. Uh, we'll be giving away trophies to top teams and top uh, racers. You don't have to stay the whole day. You can just come out and uh, race and cheer for your individual racing and then 
um, you can um, head out about your day and see the live standings um, as the day progresses, which is really cool. So um, the event's going to cost us about $9,000 to put on. So it's not a cheap event. Uh, it's going to be held at the Cycleplex at Marion University. Um, but I think with the community efforts and people jumping on board, these will be pretty cool events that'll um, definitely create some cool impact and support in the community. So we're looking forward to that. Um, we're also uh, doing a really cool um, article in our December issue to highlight uh, special education teachers for National Special Education Teacher Awareness Month. And so if you have any special teachers that you would like to have a chance to be shared um, and recognized in our December issue, um, I put the link in there for that. Um, we also, I also included the link to view all of our past digital issues um, and see all the ways to share and contribute stories. And I love that we have some great advocates um, in the community here. And we're, uh, we actually have a story every month we can do to highlight um, an advocate in the community. So I included that um, link in the chat box as well. So um, we're happy to be here. Thank you guys for all the, the great work that you do on a regular basis to pour into each of your communities. And and if you ever have ideas or thoughts or things that we should be including in Uniquely You to impact um, families and individuals, um, please feel free to let us know. Our local event section we have is free. So um, we're working on our, our current December issue. Uh, we deadline October 20th. So if you have any events that you want us to be sure to get in our um, December issue, feel free to send those my way. And uh, we can certainly get them in there to bring awareness to them. And I'm trying to think if there's anyone that hasn't gone. Has Adam, have you gone? I think we are down okay. to Tim and Michelle. Okay, Tim. <sighs> um, Tim is having trouble maintaining a connection. Oh. So I don't have a lot to say. Um. So Tim is with... An, uh, I'm going to get the name wrong. It's the United Methodist Disabilities Council. Is that right? Committee. committee. It's a committee. Um, and so along those lines, I'll just go ahead and share for him. And I don't know if he knows. Uh, on September 29th, which I believe is this coming Sunday. Um, am I right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, at North United Methodist Church, and this is open to the public, um, I'm actually doing a very similar workshop to the one that I'm doing on Thursday for Independence Indiana um, at North United Methodist Church that evening on accessible DEI and belonging the ADA. Although, because we are doing that, you know, at, with the church, Part of that conversation is going to be about not only how churches are exempt from complying with the ADA, but how if they do, they're able to keep their congregation longer by being more accessible as, of course, we develop our disabilities as we age. And so, so yeah. <laughs> Um, so, Tim, I don't know if you've seen anything about that. I know my church is supposed to be reaching out to you guys to be sure that you're aware of it and that you can spread that to other churches. So I have not seen anything about it. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I would not be surprised if they sent us a note on Monday. Yep. Um, so hopefully you hear something this week, but we'll see. So, all right, um, Tim, you got anything else that you want to add before Michelle jumps in and shares what's going on on her end of the world? Uh, I'm just having a great time with occupational therapy. Going to ask how your your recovery is going. Yeah, I, I'm getting there. Good, good. Are you being facetious about having a good time with OT? Uh somewhat and somewhat not okay good all right uh I had one more cool thing i wanted to share if that's possible good. yes please do 
Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, we are putting together a, a article in our November issue that will be coming to print here at the end of October, first day of November. And uh, Lynn Jones worked closely with the ARC and uh, finalized um, a whole entire waiver update. Uh, so be on the lookout for that to come out in the November issue because it uh, took her quite a bit of time and a lot of great things came from that, even things on the ARC uh, was updated to reflect accurate um, information and data. So at least it'll be, as far as we know, the most up-to-date and accurate waiver um, redesign information. Um, so that'll be a good thing to to check out um, at least until until they changed again. So um, keep keep a lookout for that coming out in November. All right. Very good. Michelle Terry, you want to jump in? Sure. Good morning. I'm a little under the weather, so that's why I have my camera off. Um, still um, very busy with events and doing family referrals for resources, including those enhanced referrals for those families with children with special needs and disabilities. Um, we are booking up for <laughs> events um, for October as well. I'm just staying busy um, working with the community. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, I'm curious, the idea of, of having you guys choose who was going next, I kind of feel like maybe that stifled a little bit of the conversation. Uh, so if folks have questions for each other, things that you want to, to delve into that folks brought up, please feel free to do so. Um, and uh, yes, there is Allison's hand. And I was going to ask where that beautiful giant dog went that appeared on your screen briefly. <laughs> Sorry, I had to unmute my phone. Um, she was tasking on me um, so. because I have um, like a thousand focal seizures a day and I don't even notice that I have them. So she was letting me know. <laughs> and now it's over. So she's like gone and doing her thing. Um, so that's, that's where she is. She's actually at the back door, probably looking for squirrels. Oh. Um, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my service dog. Her name is Apple. Um, she's my seizure alert dog. And she's also, uh, she's also an autism dog, um, uh, because I am autistic. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, she comes with me everywhere. She comes with me to work and, and wherever. So if you ever see me out and about, you'll see me with her. Um, and she's kind of a local celebrity. Everybody loves her. She's very sweet. Um, I wanted to um, uh, uh, talk. Uh, Sean mentioned something about the ABLE accounts and uh, raising the, the limit. And I wanted to. Um, talk about that i actually met with the um the treasurer uh the state treasurer this uh this summer and brought that up about the limit of the able accounts and how uh how ridiculously limiting that was um and how it affected uh ssdi and, um, you know, how if if that it was a possibility to change that in the legislature, because, you know, it's completely um, uh, making it impossible for people to save money. Um, and basically was given the answer that that is not something they can change within the state. Uh, they can't raise the limit in the state. Uh, they have to do it federally. Um, however, just to give you guys a heads up, um, th there, there are opportunities for the people that, you know, are the, the big head honcho, you know, people in government to, to go to the federal government and to talk to, you know, are the people that represent us, our senators, you know, the, the people that actually are making changes. And um, and so the more we make this an issue, the more we can 
affect change. So I, I do think it's important to continue to talk about it, even though I was shot down uh, at the state level. Um, also, um, the uh, ugh, my brain is not working because I had something else I wanted to say and it totally just left my head. <laughs> I hate that. That's um, totally okay if because we all experience that. And oh, and now I remember. <laughs> now I remember. I say, jump in. <laughs> um, it uh. I don't know if you knew that recently the um, and this has to do with uh, SSI benefits, but recently uh, the um, federally they were they were, they were trying to pass a law to raise that limit, um, I believe to fifteen thousand dollars, but then uh, they determined that it was too expensive. So, um, and that's why, uh, people are unable to save any money or have any assets if they are on SSI or SSDI. Um, and so I think that that's another issue that can be, um, you know, if enough people talk about it, then, then that, that can become something that, that can change but people need to to raise their voices and say something about it. So anyways, that's my take on it. Thank you, Allison. And no, you're absolutely right. And I mean, trying to, I've been on social security disability benefits for 18 years. And, and when I, without going into too much detail, when this, when I first acquired my disability and was on long-term disability benefits through my employer, it was required that I apply for my social security disability benefits. And um, when those benefits were finally approved, it was actually the day that I was returning to work. <clears throat> and I called and I said, hey, I'm returning to work. I don't need this. And they said, well, you have to get it for a year. And nobody and and they said you know if something goes wrong give us a call we'll get it reinstated but they didn't go into any detail explaining to me what those um what the opportunities were for me to return to work how that would impact uh my benefits at different levels and or different types of things and even um running a small business needing to understand that running a small business, I actually get to deduct um, the, not only my business expenses, but my disability related business expenses from that so that I don't go over that substantial gainful activity limit um, each year. And yet still it limits how much my business can do because if and so I have to make that decision and I know what that cliff is that I jump off of. And because nobody ever explained the way that all worked when I first went back to work, 18 years ago, I exhausted my safety nets. So the only thing I have is that five-year reinstatement, um, expedited reinstatement if I go over that cliff. Now, and, and so, yeah, the, over the last year or two, I made that decision to try to to get walking spirit consistently to that point. We're not there yet. Um, and and I get more and more terrified every time I look at in, at in, improving business and actually getting a fair market value for the services that I'm offering and and weighing how much I can handle that myself. And yet still looking at this goal of three years from now, being at a place where I can reach out to other people with disabilities and say, hey, I need you as an independent consultant to go in and do this assessment for me. I want to have that level of business, uh, but we're not there yet. And and yeah, the way that that all works is it's a terrifying and um, barrier because it's, it's just confusing and you're always afraid that you're going to do something that's going to cause you to lose those benefits. So to that end, yeah, thank you for for bringing that up. The other thing um, that what with what you were talking about with the able accounts, and I guess what that gets me to is 
us understanding what everybody is is seen as a concern, talking about those things and advocating for those things individually, sure, but but as a group sharing that with our own spheres of influence and increasing those advocacy efforts. So when you get shut down at the state level and you're told that that those are things that have to happen at the federal level, um, I, I don't know whether you're asking the question of how do we make that happen? Um, to, how do we reach those people at the federal le level that need to make those decisions? But and and that's a question to, that I don't necessarily think to ask. But well, we have to be. I, so we are nonpartisan. Right, so you got to be careful, and, and we can't lobby, and so we cannot contact representatives. We can't. So there, there's there are rules around what the governor's council can do, right? Um, but we can like educate, educate community members on how to advocate for themselves. And so that's really like our role. Um, so I, I really couldn't ask like, Oh, how do I get in touch with, <laughs> because it would be, the point would be moot. So, no, but what we can ask is if an individual wants to advocate for this, how do they do it? Yeah, that's we true. Can educate people. We can educate the community about the need and it doesn't have to come from the governor's council. It could come from Walking Spirit or Accessibility or any other organizations that are advocacy is a big piece of what I think all of us came from. So, um, so yeah, that's something the more that I'm, I'm learning about where funding comes from. Uh, I mean, fact is we have multiple counties throughout this state that are not served by Centers for Independent Living. Uh, that doesn't mean that they can't get some of the services, but they're not getting all of the services. And that I'm actually going to be attending the April conference, which is the um, conference for the rural independent living side of things. And I'm really looking forward to learning about that and seeing how that is different from being in a, you know, in a city. So a city that's the size of a county. But um, yeah, so. Hey, Jeremy. Yes. Can I redirect us all together for sure. something? Um, so housing is a big issue here in Marion County. Um, I attended a movie premiere about um, Beyond the Bridge and how we, the solutions. Um, there is another viewing of that movie, Beyond the Bridge, that's um, being sponsored by Greater Indianapolis Multi-Faith Alliance, which is uh, GIMA. And that information, um, the reviewing is this week, and it is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. at the Heartland Church um at 126th street and fishers and it's you know we can solve homelessness in indianapolis um it was very inspirational the movie that i uh, attended on um last month the um august 20th um the mayor actually got up and spoke and said that um he was um, willing to get a task force together to make this happen, the solution. It's already working in Milwaukee. It is already working in Houston and has been. And they do not have a homelessness issue. So they're mm -hmm. willing. Milwaukee was actually here and spoke to us, the person that implemented it in Milwaukee and it was just very hopeful so I would invite any of you to attend that tomorrow evening if you get the opportunity thank you can you put that in the chat I can thank you and that brings up another 
as as you all have been talking today, I've, I keep hearing this thought in my head of disability community calendar. Do we have anything like that as a community that is maintained by, you know, that has every, you know, it, if I had something going on, if the GCPD had something going on, if any organization had something going on that they could reach out to and say, get this on the disability community calendar, that's something public for folks to be able to find. Is anybody doing anything like that? Not that who, I'm aware of. Who who would be the organization to, with the infrastructure to be able to handle that? Because I don't think Walking Spirit is, but any thoughts? Uh, Jeremy, I could tell you that Finder, if yeah. you're familiar with Finder, they have a, a event calendar. And so anybody that is um, providing any kind of community resources, you can go to their event calendar and request to have things added to their calendar. Okay. Um, uh, so it's not necessarily geared to specifically disability, but uh, most of it is people with disabilities that the events are geared towards. So okay. that is probably the closest thing we have. Interesting. Okay, just a thought, maybe something for us to kick around, think about, um, because that I, whether we're talking about being here in Indian in Indiana or just Central Indiana or even beyond, I, that's kind of what I consistently am seeing is that the commu the disability community itself just isn't well connected or, um, you know, even and granted, yes, if it's all on a calendar. We still have to make certain people know to look on the calendar, but um, just a thought. So, all right, we only have a few minutes left. I did have something that I wanted to share with you guys because somebody, I think it was Adam, brought up the backdrop of the Star Wars collection. And at the beginning, Sean, and before we got going, Sean and I were talking about the fact that uh, when I decorated my office, with my inner child, I never expected it to become a public meeting space. And then COVID happened. And now all sorts of people from all over the world have actually been in here and seen this backdrop. So um, anybody have anything they want to add before I continue on? And then I'll wrap us up here pretty quick. Okay. So if you look up to the, well, right up here, um, that double-bladed Darth Maul lightsaber was ordered before I had the car accident that led to the loss of my legs. It arrived while I was in the medically induced coma after that car accident. And I, some of you know, some of you don't, I have a background in martial arts. Uh, I had long since abandoned anything like that. But when I ordered that, I was really looking forward to, to using it. And then when it arrived, it was this eight foot staff that I would never be able to do anything with from a wheelchair. That was what I told myself. I would put, I put batteries in it. I turned it on, made certain it worked. And every now and then a very tall friend would take it down and take it outside. But I never really utilized it. Some of you, I think, know that three years ago, I reconnected with my sensei from my youth, and we began modifying the martial art of Shorei Gojiru to both the wheelchair and the prosthetics and the crutches. And recently, I've been working with a four-foot staff to work on that particular part of the style. So I'm going to share this with you because... <clears throat> After 18 years, I finally took it down and decided to do something on my own. I don't think there's any cussing in this video. <laughs> so. You want to start over? It took me a minute to, to adjust to the fact that this thing was eight feet long.
the other thing is that sitting in this wheelchair, this particular form that I'm actually running, this is a choreographed ancient staff form. Um, because I'm out in the yard, I don't have the ability to move and spin the wheelchair around the way that I would. So as I'm working through this, I'm trying to do it without actually changing the orientation of my position. Um, just one of the interesting, uh, one of the interesting modifications, I guess, if you will, or adaptations to to doing this, doing martial arts, any form of martial arts from a wheelchair is also recognizing how you may need to change that um, based on your environment. So, so that's it. We don't need to watch the entire thing. I just thought you guys would enjoy seeing it. So there, I will turn it off since it's, that seems to be what's happening anyways. <laughs> There we go. So thanks for indulging me sharing that little piece of, of my personal life with you. Um, but although that is also something, uh, if any of you are ever interested, uh, in addition to the public speaking, Walking Spirit is now doing martial arts demonstrations, presentations around how um, adaptive martial arts can can benefit anybody with any type of disability, even simply learning and memorizing it for somebody who doesn't have the use of their limbs um, is still mental exercise that is tremendous. And uh, so that's something else that for you guys to know, I'm always happy to share. Sonia, is your hand up? No, were you actually raising your hand? I just saw your hand up. <laughs> no, okay. No, sorry. <laughs> um, I did want to say I tried to share that information and it won't let me. It says it's too much. So Jeremy, I'm just going to forward that to you. And if you could forward that out to everybody yep. um, about the housing, I would appreciate it. Yeah, Thank email you. it to me. I will include it with the video and the recap of today's session that goes out to. So you guys know the list serve on this network is about 120 um, people and around 90 different organizations. If there's anybody that you want to add to this, and remember the mission of this was always to connect our community. So if there's anybody that you feel needs to be added, you're welcome to invite them yourself or send me their info and I will make certain that they get the invitation. So, uh, that said, thank you all very much. Oh, the other thing on the martial arts stuff, if you're familiar with NeuroHope, my sensei and I are actually working with NeuroHope to develop a um, public, well, I mean, it, it will be a fee related to it, but a adaptive martial arts program through their new facility in the old five seasons once they get that opened, which I think is happening sometime in the next month or two. So hopefully by this time, well, hopefully by early spring, we will have an adaptive martial arts program that people can come sign up for and, and participate in. So that's the other thing we're working on. All right. Thank you all. Uh, any, as, as always, if there's anything that you need pushed out, let me know. I'm happy to do so. Uh, I try not to hit your emails too often, but, um, but yeah, please utilize the network. So thank you. Thank you. Yep. Have a great week. Bye. Thank you.